Hey gang, this is The Outside. Welcome to another video. So I've jumped back on the lake today. The weather is absolutely mint for a Mofala hatch. It's going to be probably mid to high teens all day. It's overcast. There's been filthy weather over the weekend, so it's a Monday, and I'm hoping things will really turn on. Had a bit of a hit up here last week. It was super windy, but the fish were definitely on, and the mayfly were definitely hatching, which was really cool to see. So basically what I've done, I won't waste any time. Let's try and get a few fish and see how we go. I've got one rod, pretty much lake rod, or boat rod, 10 foot long, set up for the dry fly, and I've got another rod, also a six by 10 foot long rod. And I've got that set up with sort of two nymphs. I'll probably play around with nymphs and maybe some English style wet flies. Had a lot of success with that last week. So we'll see how we go. Hopefully we can get some good footage and it's clear enough, but it's just nice to be here and capture a little bit of what I'm doing and not keep it all to myself. Anyway, let's see how we go. hard for this. A few fly changes, a few technique changes. And we, we've been rewarded with what appears to be a pretty nice brown trout. Just trying to figure out what fly it's taking. I think it's taking the point fly. Okay. That is awesome. Done a full lap of the boat. Still going. Oh no, missed him. That is the challenge with such long rods. They're great shock absorbers, but they make landing the fish a little tricky at times, particularly from a boat. Right at the top of the lip. Okay. This is a pretty nice fish. Beautiful Lake Winery brand trout. Can't really suck about that. So just had a bit of a reset and a bit of a move. So thought a good opportunity to run through the gear. So we're seeing fish and we're in contact with fish kind of early in the day, which is a really cool thing. So just quickly, I'll run through how I'm running this. What I'm gonna call my nymphing rod today. So we have a floating fly line through to a tapered leader section of probably around seven feet in length. That is to a tippet ring. I find they're really easy to use. I was a skeptic early on, thinking, oh, well, what's a little metal ring gonna do when you wanna float a line if I wanted to change up to dry flies, for example? But look, the reality is they're no hindrance. They're really, really easy. So from the tippet ring, we have a fluorocarbon section, which is just straight line. There's no taper in it, like there is in that tapered leader at the top. The tapered leader just helps to turn it over. One dropper and the top section. Now I have a little well, it's a cruncher, so it's like a nymph style pattern. Probably through six to eight foot through to basically a lake nymph. So that's not how I started. I started out with a beadhead claret nymph on the point fly, which is the furthest one away. And on the top, I had like an English style wet and I was moving it kind of quick because that's what worked for me last week in the wind. Not quite as windy today. They didn't like that. I think it was sitting below the fish when I was targeting a few fish. Had a few hits, but generally immediately after I'd cast, which indicates that they're eating it while it's up in the water. So, switch up, two unweighted flies, boom, had success. So we'll start another drift now. Starting to see a few duns popping. The weather is kinda temperate, it's feeling really good, so got a pretty good vibe about the afternoon. We'll see how we go. Dry fly rod, not dissimilar. Don't mind me sticking the stickers on there, I just like to remember what kind of fly line I'm using. So it's a dry line as well. It's got a tapered section, and that's down to a tippet ring, and then I've got a straight line section under that. Probably total around 20 foot length. Again, I like them long, and I've just gone with a single fly on this one today. So we'll see how that plays.
There it is. As soon as I took my eyes off that, that fish hit that dry fly like a maniac. It's always the way. That's a great result though. That's a beautiful fish. Just had the feeling things were starting to switch, although I didn't, haven't seen a lot of duns for a while, but just had that feeling, a bit of warmth, a bit of sun, and boom, there you go. It's a rainbow, but it's not a bad little fish. They're strong. Pretty cool. In the net. There we go. There you go, groovy small rainbow. Absolutely fantastic. What a beauty. Beautiful little fish. Absolutely swamped that fly too. Good little fella. Lovely little rainbow. Beautiful little white greenery fish. Here you go, buddy. Get a little bit bigger. Can't see my fly. Where is it? Oh, there it is. But I might as well get the chair out and actually be comfortable up the front of this thing. A few small rises just starting. Let's see what happens. Bang! There we go again. A little smaller fish. Probably a little rainbow, but oh, look at that. It's just having an absolute ball. There he is in the water there. Come on up you come. Gee, they go hard. There's a few bigger models out there though, I know there are, so it'd be nice just to find one of those slightly larger rainbows. Although these guys, gee, they go hard for a little fish. Something to do with the cleanliness of the water, the quality of the food. They're just happy little campers. Look at this. There's another one. What a beautiful little fish. Okay, once again, hook just spits out because it's got no barb on it. Very, very clever. There we go. Another little Wendery rainbow. Can't complain about that. What a beautiful day. What a beautiful fish. Here you go, buddy. That's not my fly. A little to your left. Okay, switched up the method again, and you get a little bit of reward for effort again. It's just the way it works. It's a funny phenomenon. It's just about keeping it half fresh. Now this one is taking the cruncher on the dropper fly, which is really cool. Oh, have a nice rainbow. Oh, they just go hard. Angry little fish. Lovely chunky little rainbows. Beautiful. Absolutely engulfed it. But no barbs, so they come straight out. Not a bad little rainbow. Alright, still got a bit of movement around. And our method of two nymphs just subsurface for these fussy fish seems to be working. So let's stick with it. All right, back to it. Yeah, here we go again. That might be a slightly better fish too. It's coming straight at me though. I want to get him up. Yeah, that's a better one. Beautiful. Just slow working these nymphs is working beautifully. And I, I really hope this would happen. 
I mean, it's a it's a tried and true technique, but um, you know, sometimes you don't trust it. You don't have confidence, or full confidence, unless you actually start to get a little bit of reward for it. Now that is a pretty nice brown trout. Let's see if we can't get him to the net. Playing him off the hand at the moment. Don't really feel like wanting all of this line back onto the reel. So at the moment, I know I've got pretty solid tipping material. So, but he's just nose down. And again, he's eating the cruncher, the dropper fly, not the point fly, which is interesting. Anyway, we're learning a few things about our, our own flies and our placement on the rig. But this fish is, I think I might have grabbed the net prematurely. He is far from done. Just want him up out of that weed. He's uh, just dagging around. Might get a shot at him here. Nearly, oh, yes. And he just fell off the fly as I got him to the net. Can you believe that? <laughs> just managed to pretty much catch him on the downslide. But that is a beautiful fish. I don't know whether he's broken off or whether he's, the hook's just fallen out at the 11th hour. But uh, that there is a lovely, lovely round trout. I mean, look, at, look at that fish. What an absolute ripper. Look at the colours. Same method. Just oh no, he's taking the point fly. That well, that's a good thing. That's what I was hoping for. Somebody to eat that little fly that I wasn't really sure whether it was actually going to be any good. A bit of positive reinforcement for the tie. All right, what do we got there? Oh, it's actually a little brown. Sort of look like a little rainbow. Very silvery little fish. Beautiful. What a ripper. Go. Barbless hook just falls out. There we go. Beautiful little silvery Lake Winry Brown. Back you go, buddy. Well, that turned into a really fun afternoon and managed to hook up on quite a few fish. Even managed to catch a few on the camera, which was even better. So, as I explained at the beginning, I started out with two rods set up. Now, they were both six weight, 10 foot fly rods, both with weight forward floating lines on because I really wanted the flies to be up and about near the top because it's mayfly season and the fish are around the top, which we saw today. Kind of a lot of rising fish and pretty aggressive feeding actually at times. My dry fly rod was running that seven foot tapered leader down to a tippet ring and then some straight leader material through to a single fly. Sometimes I'll use two, but I just find it easier to go with the one. It just, I don't know, it just makes it more simple for me. On the other rod, same setup basically. Weight forward, floating line, Short section of a tapered leader, down to a tippet ring, and then straight fluorocarbon all the way to my two nymphs. Now I changed them up a little bit as the day went on. I kind of started with what I had success with last week, which was a traditional sort of English style wet fly as my dropper. And then as a point fly, I had a bead headed claret nymph, which is usually fairly dynamite in here if the fish are down a little bit. Now I didn't see too much earlier, I tried a lot of retrieves, a lot of different techniques. So I changed them up. I immediately flipped up to some sort of a cruncher at the top and then an unweighted nymph at the back. That was successful almost straight away where I landed a decent brown trout and I think I got that one on the camera so that was kind of handy. Picked up a few other fish that way as well but all on the point fly so that was pretty interesting. It's a lake, basically a lake style nymph, a bit of clarity in the colour, a little bit of brown so pretty standard long body. Once I could clearly see fish were rising and there were duns kind of popping everywhere that's when I flipped over to my dry fly rod. So obviously the dry fly is going to float on the top. It's going to emulate those duns as they're hatching and as they're trying to take off. So the pattern I'll use that was most successful today, I think I mentioned it during my fishing, was it's a possum fur emerger, basically. It's a slightly different tie. I'll try and show a picture of it now if I've got one on the vice at home. It's kind of hangs its cone-shaped body under the water, a bit like a shaving brush type fly but the buoyancy of the possum makes it awesome and a scraggly kind of body and tail that sits subsurface. I don't know, just makes it look like something that is busting out of a casing. I think the ones I was using today had a fine purple wire rib around them. It might have been red, not sure. I'll try and put a picture in just in the bottom corner here. Things got a little bit tough as the sun came out and the wind backed off. 
they were popping on the top, but they weren't eating my fly. Changed it up, different fly, didn't work so well. Went back to something similar, got a couple of hits, actually broke off a good fish. I think I might have caught that on the film, not sure. Picked up another couple of fish here and there with that one. And then I decided, well, they were still rising, but only spasmodically. I'll bump back to the nymphing. So back to the double nymphing. Two unweighted nymphs. One I was trialing as the point fly, something I've kind of doctored up myself. It's kind of got a dark possum fur kind of thorax, and the base is a bit like a pheasant tail. Can't remember what the tail material is, but looked up a couple of fish on that, which made me quite happy. One of which I think I got on film. I'll try and show a caption of it there. And on the top, the cruncher. And it's a basic brown cruncher, pretty simple tie. And that's what accounted for the better fish on the dropper. Had several hits on that, just working a really, really slow retrieve. So it was a really rewarding day. Don't know exactly how many fish I picked up for the day, but managed to get a few on film of those, which was great. And also kept two for myself to take home. Just a couple of nice stocky rainbows, just to throw in the oven and cook them up. The fish in this lake are great to eat. It's not something I make a habit of. If I come up and I catch 10 or a dozen fish, I might take a couple and that's cool. And I try to keep the good fish here for the sports fishermen and whatnot. But the stocked rainbow trout, things like that, even the odd brown trout, they're just lovely to eat. They're a beautiful flesh and it's probably something to do with the clarity of the water in here and the quality of the food. So that's a wrap from the lake. I hope you enjoyed the content today. Going through the gear, something I haven't done before as I start to build a little bit of fishing content into the channel. I'll keep building the running content on the channel. Check that out too. A lot of good material there from Europe, which I'm hoping people are really enjoying. I'm really enjoying putting it together. So if you are a fly fisherman, I hope this inspires you to get out soon, get amongst the fresh air and actually pick up a few fish. It is a great pastime. And if you're not into fly fishing, maybe give it a try. It's not that tricky. It's one of those things that you do need to master, but I love that challenge and a lot of hobbies are like that. So I want to give it a crack. Again, like the videos if you think they're pretty cool. If you don't, that's okay. And also consider subscribing to the channel. Absolutely no pressure on that one, but it does help me and it does encourage me to keep building and keep growing the channel. The channel is in its infancy, there's no doubt about that, and it's a long build. I really enjoy putting this stuff together and that's the most important thing. And if people get something out of it or just enjoy watching it, then I'm wrapped with that. I really hope your run, trail or fly fishing week is going awesome. And as usual, keep fishing, stay happy, and I'll see you on the outside.